गुड इवनिंग आर्यन Yes, got the answer, uh, everyone. हेलो आर्यन आर्यन धैर्य एंड मोक्षा गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन सो सर ओके मोक्षा इज अनेबल टू टर्न ऑन द माइक ओके मोक्षा सो विल कंटिन्यू टुडे विद मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल्स Today we will try to do extraction of metals. We will try if we are able to complete the extraction of metals. In the last class we had seen the reactions of metals. Okay. The most important among them are the reaction of metals with an acid. Just one minute. Let me open up the book. आरो I just check that whether today you are able to reply or not. In the last class, Aro did very well. So I think everyone should see that in the last class, I think Aro's camera was on throughout the class. Right? Am I right, Aro? Yes. Sir. Yes. And he was also responding to every question. So this I expect from everyone. Your participation will make the class more interactive. You will be more and enjoying more learning the content. Otherwise, you can just merely you can find out the videos, uh, class videos from YouTube and anything. But here, yeah, being interactive is what we expect. Okay, we also did the decomposition reaction of the metals in the last class. Okay, how do metals and non-metals react? So, how do metals and non-metals react? See, now here this topic we are going to see as a concept building for ionic bond. Whenever a chemical compound is formed, there is formation of a bond. So, which types of bonds we discuss here? There are two types of bonds. One of them, they are the covalent bonds and the other ones which are the ionic bonds. So in this chapter, we will be learning with the ionic bond formation. So see how do the metals react 
to form ionic bonds. So the topic for today is how metals react with non-metals. And this topic we can summarize as ionic bond. So what is an ionic bond? Let's see. The bond formed between two ions. How do metals react with non-metals? So for that, we first look up at any metal. For example, if I look at sodium. Okay. So sodium has atomic number 11. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening, Sumo. Very good sir, evening. Yes. Sir, can you, uh, are you explaining metals and non-metals? Yes. Yes, Sumo. Yes. Sir, can you explain it from first, uh, from the chapter starting? Uh, complete starting chapter? Yes, sir. Metals and non-metals. Okay. Because I have exam uh, tomorrow. So, see, instead of just going through, again, starting of the chapter, I suggest you one thing, Sumuk. Uh, Sumuk? Yes, sir. In this chapter, uh, what topics you should be learning for your exams? Okay? See, in the beginning, you just have the physical properties of the metal. You just go through the physical properties. You can find that written. All right? Just go through the physical properties. And after the physical properties, you have to read the chemical properties. Okay. So see what all you should see in chem chemical properties. We had learned these chemical properties one by one. Okay. So just remember this like this. The chemical properties, the uh, reaction of a metal with oxygen. This was the first one. You have to look for reaction of metal with acid. We have third one was reaction of metal with water. Then we had seen the reaction of metals with bases. This is what, uh, what all you have to look for. And among them, the reaction of metal with water is very important. So from this topic, as there are a lot of varieties in this, the ones which are most reactive, they can react even with cold water. The one which are a little bit less, they react with hot water. The one which are least reactive, they react with steam. And there are some which don't even react with steam. Okay. So you just remember which one react with the cold water. So with cold water, you find sodium, potassium reacting with cold water. With what, hot water, you find calcium and magnesium. With steam, you find uh, aluminium, iron, and zinc re reacting with steam. Got it? <laughs> so here, in these two cases, the oxides of sodium and potassium, they are soluble, so they form hydroxides also. Got it, Sumu? Sumo? Yes, sir. So just go through these four topics. This will give you complete revision. Yes, from sir. What, whatever was the back. So today we see how metals react with non-metals. So sir, then, uh, yes. Sir, then uses of uh, uh, baking soda. Uses of baking soda. Sir, can you once explain the acid base and salt square? Uses or preparation? Yes, yeah, sir. You see, and for you, I'm making here baking soda. So understand what all questions come from this. Baking soda, this is the common name. Okay. When there's common name, so this is baking soda is the common name. NaHCO3, this is the chemical formula. This is the formula. And 
सोडियम हाइड्रोजन कार्बोनेट और सोडियम बाई कार्बोनेट दिस इज द केमिकल नेम सो इट्स केमिकल नेम इज सोडियम बाई कार्बोनेट और सोडियम हाइड्रोजन कार्बोनेट एन एच सीओ थ्री इज द केमिकल फॉर्मूला बेकिंग सोडा इज द कॉमन नेम सो हाउ दिस बेकिंग सोडा इज फॉर्म फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट्स फॉर्मेशन so baking soda it is formed by involving four substances what are the four substances that we involve here we involve ammonia we involve nacl sodium chloride we involve carbon dioxide and water so these four reactants combine together to form ammonium chloride nh four cl you get here nahco3 sodium hydrogen carbonate has obtained here got it so remember this reaction by which you obtain sodium hydrogen carbonate so sodium hydrogen carbonate or baking soda it is sparingly soluble in water so it can be separated out from the solution Whereas ammonium chloride is soluble, so it is it remains there in the solution. Got it? Now uses as we know that baking soda has a property of evolving carbon dioxide when heated. So carbon dioxide is heat. Whenever baking soda will be heated, it will evolve carbon dioxide gas. Or if it reacts with acid, then also it will evolve carbon dioxide gas. so where all we can use this for the uses of baking soda nhco3 where all we can uh, used in bakery so it is used in bakery to obtain as a leveling agent that leveraging agent that means to, uh, for the cakes and it makes the cakes and bread to be spongy in nature since it produces carbon dioxide so it makes it spongy in nature also since it produces carbon dioxide it is used in fire extinguishers got it in fire extinguisher this is one of the use the next one is it is used as used to remove permanent hardness of water got it so this some of the uses of baking soda it is used as a constituent what it yes so let's yes, continue sir. with metals so here we have a metal reacting with a non metal so if you observe any metal the like here we consider sodium has an atomic number 11 and it has a configuration of 281 if you observe magnesium electronic configuration 12 it has the arrangement as 28 1 282 okay other metals you can look for like calcium also has a similar arrangement which are with atomic number 20 it has the arrangement 2882 so all the metals their valence electrons are very less if you have a look at the valence electrons of the metal For sodium, the valence electron is only one. Magnesium has two valence electrons. Calcium also has two valence electrons. Got it? Yes. So for these elements, it is easy to. so now for these metals it is easy to lose one electron or two electrons so when they want to complete their octet they complete their octet by losing one electron and forming their ions like sodium so sodium it loses one electron and forms na plus sodium ion magnesium it gain magnesium also loses two electrons 
it also loses two electrons and forms Mg2 plus I. Magnesium 2 plus I. What is? So this is Mg2 plus I or magnesium I. Similarly, similarly, calcium has two valence, valence electrons. So calcium loses two of the electrons and form calcium 2 plus I. So calcium Ca, it loses two electrons to form Ca2 plus. Got it? Yes, Driti, Uriyai Shah, Shayan Sharif. Yes, sir. Okay, have you understood how do the metals form their ions? Yes, sir. Okay. In the similar way, what of what happens to the non-metals? See, the non-metals, they are highly electronegative in nature. They are electronegative in nature. So they accept electrons. For example, if you look at chlorine, so chlorine is highly electronegative and its configuration, its atomic number is 17, its configuration being 287. So it has seven valence electrons in the outermost shell. Therefore, it accepts one electron. So what happens to chlorine? It accepts one electron and forms chloride ion. It forms chloride ion. If you take fluorine, so chlorine accepts one electron and it forms the fluoride ion. So it forms the fluoride ion. F minus. Got it? Yes, understood this? So this is chloride chloride ions are formed. Now, the bond between a metal ion and a non-metal ion can be established. And we, we have seen that metal has donated electron, whereas a non-metal has accepted electron. Okay. So, such a bond form is called as an ionic bond. For example, here we take sodium. So, sodium is Na+. Plus. It combines with Cl-, minus, giving rise to NaCl, sodium chloride. So the salt sodium chloride, it has been formed as a reaction between a metal and a non-metal. It has been obtained as a reaction between a metal and a non-metal. So it can be Na plus Cl minus. So this is an ionic bond. Okay. So generally we like this sodium metal reacts with chlorine non-metal to form sodium chloride. Got it? In the similar way, a magnesium atom will react with chlorine Cl2 to form MgCl3. Wherever required, you can balance the reactions. Like here it is Na plus Cl2 will form two NaCl, so balance the reaction. The similar reactions occur with different other metals and non -metals. Different metals form there, like uh, you have the formation of sodium bromide, copper chloride. So, a sodium bromide will also be formed like this. Sodium bromide, Na plus Br2, will give NaBr. So it is sodium bromide. You can take this as 2, multiply this here with 2. You get NaBr or sodium bromide. You can also have the reaction of copper chloride. 
copper reacting with chlorine to form CuCl2. So the, all these are examples of reaction of metals with non-metals. Okay. So first of all, which type of bond is set up between a metal and a non-metal? Yeah. Which type? Ionic bond. This bond is called as an ionic bond or electrovalent bond. So we can say huh, the bond between Better react with the non metal to form ionic or covalent bond. Got it? A metal reacts with a non metal to form ionic or covalent bond. So I think everyone is clear with how do metals react with non-metals? So see, it is the transfer of electron. It has been shown to form as a transfer of electron. And the symbols which have been used here, they are called as electron dot symbols. So here, electron dot structure has been used to represent the bond formation. You see, in the same way, here also it has been so. Let's try to represent them as electron dot structures. So, suppose I want to represent sodium chloride, I will write here Na with one valence electron. I will write here chlorine with seven valence electrons. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have seven valence electrons. Now, one electron from sodium, sodium donates one electron, which was accepted by chlorine. So Na forms like this, Na plus, and chlorine accepts the electrons and forms chloride ion. So it forms chloride ion. Okay, so combined it together, you obtain NaCl. This was negatively charged. In the same way, we can show the formation of NPCl2 also. Understood, everyone? Yeah, did everyone get it there? Yeah? Yes, sir. Now, properties of ionic compounds. See, uh, questions yeah. are asked from this topic the yes, properties sir. of ionic compounds. So whatever ionic compounds we see, the ionic compounds, they have high melting and boiling point. Can anyone state why the ionic compounds have high melting and boiling points? Yeah, Sumo, why ionic compounds have high melting and boiling point? Yeah, so I, I didn't get any response. So, no? So, no? Yes, sir. Uh, so, Sumo so is uh, busy preparing for his exams. Okay. Okay, so I'll just guide to the POP and give some answer. Okay. So, for everyone, I think everyone should be clear up to here. The properties of the ionic compounds. Okay. The ionic compounds, they have high melting and boiling point. The reason for high melting and boiling point is the strong forces of electrostatic attraction, or we can say that ionic bonds are much smaller, much stronger.
So we had observed here that ionic compounds, they have high melting boiling point because the bond between them is much stronger. Now if you look up at the next property, we can say that about the electrical conductivity of the ionic compounds. The ionic compounds, they have uh, they are poor conductors of electricity when solid, but in their molten state, they are liquids. Yes, in the molten state, they are all liquids. In the molten state, they are conductive. So see this? This table lists out the melting and boiling points here. Ionic compound sodium chloride, its melting point is 1074. Boiling point of sodium chloride is six, 1686. So it's much, much stronger. Okay, it's, it clearly states that the bond formed between them is very strong. Next, you can see lithium chloride. Calcium oxide has a still high melting point, 2850. See, uh, here a reaction has been shown, showing the reaction of or conductivity of a salt solution. As you can see, a bulb has been connected in the circuit, which shows the conductivity of salt solution. So the dry, sol dry, sol uh, the dry salt is not conducting, whereas the salt solution is conducting. Their equal solution, they are conducting. Okay. So, see here, physical nature, ionic compounds are solids and are somewhat hard because of the strong force of attraction between the positive and negative ions. Because of the strong forces of attraction between the positive and negative ions, Ionic compounds are solids and are somewhat hard. So all the solids, like if you observe common salt, that is hard. The common salt that you see at your home, that common salt is actually uh, is grounded form of it. Okay. Melting and boiling points. So we just discussed that ionic compounds are high melting and boiling points. Solubility. So since they are ionic in nature. All the salts, they are soluble in water. Electrovalent compounds are generally soluble in water and insoluble in solvent like kerosene or petrol. Your salt will be insoluble in kerosene. If you put a salt in kerosene, it will be insoluble. Got it? The last one is conductivity of conduction of electricity. So all the metal salts, they are non-conducting in their solid state. So the conduction of electricity through a solution involves the movement of charged particles. A solution of an ionic compound in water contains ions which move the opposite electrodes and hence electrons pass through the solution. So all the salt solutions, they will be soluble or they will conduct electricity. Yes, sir. Next, in this question number one, we'll see these questions later today. Just let's clarify his doubt. I think, uh, who had the doubt? Sumuk, right? Okay, so Sumuk had the doubt regarding gypsum and POP also. Yes, Sumuk? 
Yes, sir. So, see, gypsum is a salt of calcium. This is called as calcium sulfate. CaSO4. So, calcium sulfate is gypsum. Calcium sulfate dot dihydrate. So, two molecules of water are there in gypsum. So, when this gypsum is heated to 373 Kelvin, so this gypsum CaSO4 dot 2H2O when heated at 373 Kelvin. So it gives CaSO4 calcium sulfate dot half H2O and the 3 by 2 molecules of H2O they get evaporated like this. We have 3 by 2 molecules of H2 or water getting evaporated. Got it? Now, this CaSO4 dot half H2 which is left over there, this is our POP or plaster of Paris. So, this POP can again be turned back into gypsum by adding water to it. So, if water is added to POP, the POP settles into a hard solid. Got it? Yes, sir. So here, the POP we got as CaSO4 dot half H2O. And this property of POP for it being settling into a solid by addition of water molecules, it makes it usable at a number of places. So if you add here 3 by 2 H2O, you get CSO4.2 H2O. So because of this, the POP is used as a, at number of places, like uh, ceiling designs. Okay. It is also used in hospitals for the treatment of bones or fixing of the bones. We use plaster of Paris we, for plastering. Any other, anyone having any other doubt? Sumuk, is your doubt clear? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, where is gypsum used more? Where is gypsum? Used more. Is it uh, gyp uh, is gypsum used? Uh, gypsum finds its application mainly in the manufacture of PUP oil. Okay. Yes, sir. Any other any other topic? Sir, okay. uh, about yes. bleaching powder. Bleaching powder. So you want to do all? Okay. No, sir. The last part of the chapter. So bleaching powder is obtained by so when chlorine gas is passed over slaked light. So this is, uh, calcium hydroxide it is taken as a dry calcium hydroxide. Just remember you take it as a dry calcium hydroxide and not as a wet okay. and pass chlorine gas through it, you get here calcium oxychloride, CaOCl2. Its chemical name is calcium oxychloride. So, you, if it will form calcium oxychloride plus water molecule will be released. So, this is your bleaching powder. Yes, sir. Where all we use this? So it can be used as a bleach in laundry. That is, bleach means it is used to remove the colors as it provides a nascent oxygen. It is also used in the paper industry for bleaching purposes. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Also, it is used as a disinfectant for disinfecting water. 
due to the disinfecting properties it has it is used as a disinfectant also so these are the different uses of bleaching powder so very good sumo just go through all these they are very important points okay bye all of you see you again thank you sir class. bye sir so bye